Hey friends, if I look like I just woke up, I just did, so that's why I look a bit sleepy. But anyway, today I'm going to make a potato and oat based pizza. And I thought you guys might be interested in seeing how I do that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to peel these potatoes and steam them. And I'm going to make some oat flour by grinding up some of these oats in the coffee grinder, okay? So my spuds are ready to be steamed and I just want to show you how easy it is to make oat flour. So there's the rolled oats. Just stick that. Give it a bit of a loose. Give it a bit of a shake up. Okay, so I just give it a bit more of a whiz and there we go. See? Beautiful. Okay. So now while my potatoes are cooking, I come out to the garden and see what I've got in the garden that I can put as toppings on my pizza. So I was looking for some red capsi uh, capsicums or peppers. I actually picked quite a few yesterday for a salad. So I can't actually find a lot of red ones, but should be all right. That'll do. Oops, I just broke that, so I might as well take that green one too. I actually probably only need two. Did I kill that one too? Oops, I killed that one too. Take her. And then the other thing I thought I might ha take from here is some basil. Put some basil on the pizza. That should be nice. Because the dressing has, the uh, pizza base has garlic in it. So garlic and basil and tomato be quite tasty and onion. Alrighty. Now I come to meet some of my tomato bushes and get some nice ripe tomatoes. A little looksy. Get some nice. Try to pick the reddest ones because they're the sweetest. Okay, so I thought I might get some kale too. I'd use some shallots, but normally, but I've actually got red onions, so I'm going to put red onions on the pizza today. And so I might just grab a couple of these leaves of kale because I quite like kale or chard on the pizza. And once it cooks it, you know, it reduces down to nothing virtually. Okay. Just to summarise, this is what I'm going to put on top of the pizza base is the tomato paste which I shared the recipe with you guys in the last video of that um, and then just everything that I put in my garden and also this red onion so yeah red onion, kale, bell pepper, tomatoes and basil okay so I'm just going to prepare this to go on as toppings and I'll be back again in a tick so the potatoes are steamed and I've just added some oat flour so I'm going to mix this together and make a dough. I may or may not need to add water. Like I said, I, I don't really do quantities. I'll just add a bit of this and a bit of that until I get the right consistency. Yeah, okay, so I'll make the dough and I'll be back with you in a tick. There's the dough. I didn't need to add any water because the potatoes had plenty of moisture in them. But I did add some more flour because it just needs to be able to have a good stickiness when you lay it out so it doesn't fall apart. Okay, I'm just going to lay it out onto this tray. I didn't need to use all the dough that I made, so I'm going to make something yummy with this later, but there it is. Now, I'm going to grill it because the reason is that I grill it both sides is because if I bake it, um, it can have a tendency, this dough can have a tendency to stick to the bottom even though I use oat flour underneath. But if I bake it, uh, if I grill it, it heats from the top and then I can flip it over easily and it doesn't stick. I could uh, avoid that problem by using baking paper, but I don't use baking paper. I'd rather just use glass. Okay, so I'll just grill it both sides and then I'll be back with you to put the toppings on. So there's my base ready for topping so I'm just going to stick on the tomato paste I'll be back with you in a tick okay so I've got all my toppings here and I'm just gonna put them put them on now 
So I put the kale on top of the tomato pet, uh, sauce and then I put basil and then onion and then the tomatoes and the bell peppers and the reason I put the bell peppers on top because they need a lot more cooking and so I will actually now bake this up on the high shelf in the oven uh, so it doesn't burn the base and it gives it gives it time for the veggies to cook. Okay, so I'll probably put it in for about 20 minutes we'll just see. Okay, so there we go, I'll put it in. And I normally bake on 100, about 180 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. It's been in the oven 20, 25 minutes and it's now cooked. And I don't know if you can notice, but um, it's actually reduced down quite a bit. So it's actually the layer of veggies isn't that thick now. So <clears throat> I'm just gonna slice it up and eat it for brekkie. And it's gonna be bloody delicious. So thanks for watching. I'll see you, see you later.